Hello, my name is Cold Bear, and this is my very quick list of upcoming strategy games similar to Age of Empires. As always, I will not waste your time. Let's start with Stronghold Warlords. The game allows you to assume the role of a lord with a small castle and a poor village at your command. With this you have to build a powerful country, like Brazil or Latvia. Game offers a single player campaign, single historic missions and a sandbox mode, allowing you to build castles without being constricted with any objectives, or in other words, a pussy mode, where you are not threatened by any adversaries. Also here you will find a multiplayer, so you can occasionally feel humiliated by much stronger players. Manor Lords here you will build your own medieval village, which in time will turn into a city. And then if your city is strong enough, you can engage in raping and villaging activities by raiding other cities. Well, at least almost every RTS game works this way. Game is strictly single player, and at first it was created by one man. Now the creator has some helpers, so the process of developing is speeding up. Universum Game is an early access from 2018, but the final release should entertain us this December. Here you can jump straight into managing your own planets as you guide a civilization through the ages. So a concept ripped off straight from the Age of Empires hot and that is great. Game has really deep and interesting gameplay. For example, every planet comes with a few surprises that are sure to challenge your civilization. From tornadoes that consume everything in their path to thunderous earthquakes that threaten to split your civilization in two. If you treat nature poorly, it might just show you how brutal and unforgiving it can be. Ah! Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition while waiting for Age of Empires 4, your urge to play something Age of Empires related will be satisfied by Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And as it was with the previous remaster, here you will get not only the same game with a sharper 4K graphics, but also enhanced audio. Two new civilizations of Inca and Swedes, making a total of 16 playable civilizations. Also, you will be able to dive into historical battles mode, where the fate of famous wars will be decided by your ability to efficiently control your units. I'm kidding. I'm sure that you will be a great commander. Or, or not. Fate Adieu Game has recently finished its successful Kickstarter journey by collecting almost $60,000 of pledges. Here you as a powerful god fight against up to 4 AI gods to rule a fantastic world and its mortals. These mortals act self-sufficiently and need to be persuaded to follow you. But how you will achieve this? Build great armies to expand and gain new followers by force or establish wonderful settlements, improve their cultural value and convince others to join your path. And you know, sometimes convincing is more effective when you give a plague to some village and then offer your help by removing it, at least partially. You know, someone has to die to learn a lesson, right? Spellforce Free Fallen God this will be a completely standalone game, meaning that you can not only play the game without the original game, but also you don't need to be familiar with the story of Spellforce 3 or with Soul Harvest expansion to jump right in. Here you will control a nomadic tribe of trolls that has just one goal, to survive, because someone is poaching them for their tusks. That is terrible, Peta should take action by organizing some naked protests. Anyway, you will help trolls to survive by a Awakening Fallen God. Totally safe activity. What wrong could happen? Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. First part wasn't a hit, it was really underrated, but it was not a bad game. Many players have warm feelings towards it, not as warm as fire or sun, but at least as warm as Pug's belly. So now, 16 years later, we have ourselves part 2. Here, in addition to development of cities as well as industrial and mining infrastructure, you can also occupy positions at the royal court, economics, conduct spying, perform diplomacy-related activities, trade with neighbors 
neighbors and develop some stupid religion where you can worship a beaver god or a cucumber goddess. I don't know if that's possible. I hope that you can do stuff like that. Oh, 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 and what about the religion of humongous balls, where the pope and leader of people would be the one with the biggest, shiniest and heaviest balls among men? Just imagine the scales adapted specially for measuring the weight of someone's balls, where the one with the high score wins all the elections. And what about women, you would ask? You know, in my life I saw so many women with balls bigger than some men, so something would be invented about that, don't you worry? Equality is the principle of every religion, isn't it? Isn't? Oh, wait. The Settlers game is called The Settlers without any number afterwards, but actually it is The Settlers 8. The next chapter in Settlers franchise will be released about 10 years after the initial release of Settlers 7, so it's an anniversary release. Here you will find a story campaign that can be completed alone or in co-op mode, so be sure to find at least one friend until the release of the game. Easy way to get a friend is to put potato salad and a plate of marinated herring near someone's door and wait for them to come out because the smell of these awesome foods is irresistible. Then grab that person and that's it, you have a friend, take it to your gaming room. The settlers will provide optional side missions and multiplayer PvP battles. Actually I, even though I do not have any friends because I do not like to share my potato salad, I have pretty high hopes for this game, it looks really cool. Going Medieval Stake your claim in this colony building sim and survive a turbulent medieval age where almost everyone has died from plague. Here you will construct a multi-story fortress in a land reclaimed by wilderness, defend against raids and keep your villagers happy as their personalities are shaped by the world. Well, keeping in mind all that plague and also occasional pillaging, keeping villagers happy might be a harder thing than getting drunk from non-alcoholic vodka. Dwarfheim. This is an RTS game with thrilling co-op and team gameplay that will appeal to fans of multiplayer games, but it also has some treats for single-player lovers. An example here you can play a survival mode, a grueling and fast-paced challenge where all classes, buildings, units and abilities are immediately unlocked, or play in skirmish and put your skills against AI in a series of maps each more challenging than the last. Sadly, nothing like a campaign will be implemented here, at least for now. The Plague Kingdom Wars Game is in early access, but the final release date isn't coming really fast. In game it's a year 1347, the time of Hundred Years War. In this historical grand strategy and RTS hybrid, you will play as one of 200 minor lords across medieval Europe, Africa and Middle East. Rise up to take over your kingdom and be crowned, then fight to preserve your empire as Black Death descends on Europe. So again, fun game about plague. War Selection Game is in early access now and a full release is planned next year. War Selection is a real-time alternative history strategy with base building, resource extraction and warfare. Here you will battle for supremacy against dozens of opponents on a unique procedurally generated map. Every player starts in a stone age and then goes through seven historical eras by the process you are very familiar with from Age of Empires. Each evolutionary road brings its own unique game experience with unique game mechanics and other possibilities until you reach the age of heavy tanks and long-range artillery. And how about nuclear bombs? How about lasers from space? Why stop there? How about spaceship battles? No? That's sad, but still, game looks very cool. Kingdoms Reborn this is a simple city builder with implemented multiplayer and open world. Here you will grow from a tiny village to a prosperous city and upgrade your houses and technology through various eras. World is procedurally generated, so do not expect hand-picked awesome environments, but hey, the game is simple and sometimes it's all we need. Timberborn 
Humans are long gone. Will your society of lumberpunk beavers do any better? This is a city-building game featuring ingenious animals, modular vertical architecture and water control mechanics. Be aware that the game contains high amounts of wood. Not that wood, you pervert! And smart beavers. Well, beavers will be as smart as you let them to be. All in all, you will be the guide of their civilization, so it might very well be that they are already doomed. Viking City Builder Pillage your enemies and burn their puny villages to ashes. Viking City Builder is a classic game with a real-time strategy elements that allows you to live through historic expansions of the Viking Age. These are uncertain times for Europeans when the Norsemen started a large-scale conquest campaign throughout Europe to broaden their territories, become one of the leaders of such group and prove the world that your balls are the biggest. That's it, thank you for watching, don't hesitate to subscribe for more epic videos like this one. Also think about becoming my Patreon supporter, even $1 a month is a huge help. You will find all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time, bye.